Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In this video we are going to talk about the carrier and convoy planner. I will walk you through what's new with version 1329. If, it, if this is the first video you see about CCP or carrier convoy planner, uh, you need to see to watch the video on version 1328 which shows you how the whole uh, CCP uh, program works. And this video here will show you the improvements since uh, that version. So let's get started. The objectives. And learn what was fixed in this version of CCP and learn all the new features added with this version of CCP. And why do we care? Well, it's an awesome tool. It gives you a lot of uh, immersion uh, in your flying. And where would I use it? In mission planning or target practice, of course. And also, it would be in a, a good addition in conjunction with FSX at War version 1 when it comes out. So, the changes in version 1329. Numerous minor fixes, of course. A fixed spawning on a carrier in prepared 3D. Uh, there was an issue with that, so that got corrected. And there's also some corrections and compensation that was made for magnetic variation on photo real maps. And we'll look at that in the CCP. It can work with the Prepare 3D version 3 but it's not tested and I do not have version 3 yet I'm waiting uh, for uh, BRS to uh, to create uh, tech pack compatible with it but if you do have a version 3 you can actually go on your CCP config INI which is at uh, the root of the CCP folder installation and just uh, change a node or create a node to look like this. New features. Okay, we're able to actually add objects in CCP. Not to be confused with the uh, the objects that you add using uh, the tag pack. You're able to add JTAC, which is a laser pointer. So for example, it simulates the ground troops that would uh, laser target for for you and you come in and hit that target and we'll look at that and the laser pointer the code laser code is uh, 1234 and uh, if you don't know how to uh, pick up a laser target uh, watch buddy lays video that I have on my channel I also have the ability to add flak and smoke you can add plane formations you can have planes take off and land on airports. Pretty cool stuff. And you can start a TPS file from within CCP, which means you can have all your TPS objects as well as your CCP objects all together started as one within the CCP. Now let's take a look in CCP and see uh, all these features and explore how that works and how to use them. So looking at this interface, you can see that uh, it looks very similar, but there is a new section that's called into the sim. And that's the area that we're going to uh, spend time in, and I'll show you how to add objects. Really cool, really cool section. For the time being, uh, we're going to spend time on the boat section. Now, there is a section in the boat section that uh, is not new. It was actually... Uh, in place when the, the last release went out but I did not talk to it in the previous video so therefore I will cover it here so if you look in this uh, square here at the time that I created the video it was not added and this here got added towards the end where we uh, the software was released you have the ability to add formations and you'll see here there's all the different kinds of formations and those objects are in your your objects so you see here you have the uh, the limits and the, the positions but now what you might be interested in knowing is that you can create your own formation and I'll show you how to do that and you can also and uh, what to, to do that all you need to do is uh, know what you want to uh, to put in so let's uh, let's let's do a working example here so let's say I want to put uh, uh, the shadows the goal uh, carrier so this one here. So see how it's uh, the name VEH underscore CDG underscore one. 
So that's important that it would replace this here. So you could, in essence, if you want to uh, add more to this, you could add it in here. You could move it up. You know, you could move it up until it gets to the top. And if you move it to the top here, and uh, you set it at zero, zero, and delete this one here, you essentially replace the carrier group uh, carrier. Now you could also m maybe you want to add a helicopter. So same process, you add a helicopter and then the helicopter is here. But notice where the helicopter, you don't know where it's at. So you could go and define the position and try to add it by finding that number five, which, I, which is this one here, and add it here. And hit validate and now you have the uh, formation but notice you will not see it here because it's after the fact it's not created within this tool here so if you, with that being said let's say that I want to have it as part of this group here so let's see how that would work and and this here now just bear in mind uh, that if you do make those changes next time the next version comes out it will change again it will override that file, so you'll have to back it up if you don't. If you alter that file and you want to keep what you've created, so let's take a look at the root of the CCP folder. There's a boats pattern I and I. Now the boats pattern I and I, when you start it up, and uh, I will start it up here. I'll open it up for you, and I have it on my list. There we go. And you see here there's formation. So these each one of these here represents a formation that we have in here now if you look at the uh, if I want to add a formation I'd have to create a new formation number five uh, number five so let's let's do that let's try to create a new formation so I will copy what I have and I will paste it below here now I need to change change to number five and here we're going to call it uh, the Charles de Gaulle group and uh, now you see this carrier here we have to change so all we have to do is take the name of this carrier here and put it in here so let's do that And that's the reference that it will use. And then uh, we want to add this this actual uh, vehicle here. So what we'll do is we'll add another unit. So we'll add it here. I'll call it Unit Four. And the name that it has here. Uh, so just to make it easier we'll select it here and then I can copy and paste this portion here I'll change that vehicle now you notice how there is a 600 400 so I will make it zero zero and let's talk about this real quick because then uh, I will have to cover that when we get to another section so essentially I made it zero zero it's in the same position as a carrier so therefore it would be right on top of the carrier at number one now the way this works there is a think of it as uh, the first number being x along the axis and then think of it as a cross so the number one if I want to put it to the left of the center then it would be a negative number if I want to put it to the right it'd be a positive number so I'm going to put a helicopter right at the edge of the carrier here. So the first number is the X number. So therefore I'll give it a minus 100, which will put it to the right of the carrier. So I should see a number five to the right here. Now if I put 100, it would put it on this side. Now there's also a Y axis, which is the second number. So now let's take a look at the, these here. So one being zero, the center. So let's take a look at number two and number four. You see number two is ahead and number four is a little bit further ahead. So look at number two, the second number for number two, which is unit one, is minus 300. 
and uh, oh, something doesn't work here. Hang on a sec. Uh, number two, number four, sorry. So number two is minus 300, right? So it says ahead of number one by this much. Number 400 should be more than uh, number four. Number four is a uh, unit number three, which is this one here. It's minus 400. So anything above the one is minus, and everything below the one is positive. So to reiterate, so now, just to illustrate that point, we'll use this uh, helicopter. Number five, I've made minus 100, so it's gonna be to the left of the number one. And if I want it to be ahead of the carrier, I can make it minus 100 as well. So now it would be to the left and ahead of the carrier. So let's see what that looks like. I will save. And now I will select a different group. This one here, fortunately, we don't have to reload everything. Uh, yes, I'm going to have to reload for you to see it. <laughs> nice. Okay. So once I get the position loaded, we won't have to. So let me uh, get out this section. Go back in. And let's take a look. There's our Charles de Gaulle group. Notice that number five is ahead and to the left because we use 100. So now if I want it to be, uh, be uh, behind the uh, carrier, then I would use a positive number on the Y side. So if I change this to 100 instead of minus 100, it should drop below the one. So let me save that. Okay. And let's see if it will take it right away here. Yeah, it took it right away. So see how it's behind? And like I said, if I wanted to have be right next to the carrier on the left-hand side, then I would just make that number zero, and it would be uh, even with the carrier. And that's all there is to that. Now you can use that that uh, carrier group to your any time you like, and you can create, customize your own, share them with your friends. So that's the portion of the boat. The rest works identical. You basically create the boat formation save it and you can even change it de define the position and change it you can create a naval path for it add it to fsx you can join the carrier same as everything else is the same now the ground portion has not changed it's identical so the next portion we're going to look at is going to be in the airplane section so in the airplane interface nothing uh, much changed uh, all is pretty much the same, except that you have a new button here called Create Formation. We're going to work with that. And I will show you something here. The airport, you see now we have some circles. So what was created is circles where it actually detects the airport itself as far as uh, the runways so that we're able to actually have airplanes take off and land on runways. So that's a pretty pretty neat thing to have and that will create a flight later on where we'll make the, the plane actually fly out of here and go into this one here. Now in order to be able to do that uh, what was accomplished is uh, you, have to, you have to know the exact uh, coordinates of the runways and as you know there's magnetic deviation and all kinds of stuff that change over time so there's an app that was created, uh, that was uh, that was used, and what it does is actually search your your uh, runways and it creates a list for the CCP. So if you have some custom runways, then you need to run this app. Uh, if you only have the stock airport that was already created for you, so let's take a look how to do that. So if you look in the the CCP folder under the data, you're gonna see a an application called Make Runways. Now go ahead and copy that application and you can paste it into your FSX folder. See I got my this is my FSX folder. So I'll paste it in here and then what you will do is run that application. So you just double click it. Now you see it's starting to run. Uh, it's going to take quite a while if you have a lot of uh, airports and whatnot. If you if you like me, you've been flying for a few years. You probably probably take a while if you've added some stuff. So 
it's going to create some some files that will be used by CCP will transfer them so I'll show you that when it's done uh, what you want to do here is uh, is is where we're going to put all the files that we want to that we're going to get from here so I'll, co I'll come back uh, after all the files have, have been created and we'll proceed to the next steps okay so it is now done creating those files so I'll click OK and now we're gonna that app we already have it here we no longer need it in here so I'll go ahead and delete it and now let's go find those XML files that it added for us and it should be called runway XML so start with R so there's three files that I created there's a runway runway text and runway XML so select all three uh, by uh, selecting uh, the first one and then the last one holding the shift key if you're not sure how and you find it easier just create uh, just take one at a time anyways you can uh, right click after that and cut because we want to remo remove them from here and go to your CCP data folder and paste now once you're in here we're going to replace this file here runway FSX that that now the if you're running prepare 3d or SE that file is going to be called FSX SE or P3D. So just uh, use whatever name of the file that you have. We're basically going to replace this file with the runway XML file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press F2 to change the name. I'll copy the whole file name. Okay. And I just uh, copy that name. Once I copy that file name, I'll take the original and rename it uh, underscore OLD. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the run with the XML, press F2, select the whole file. Now we'll paste the name that I just uh, copied. And it asked me if I want to change it, say yes. So now I do have a new runway uh, FSX that, that that's dated today. And the original is still here, although we won't be using it. And if you're curious, you can go look in there and it's all kinds of information about all the runways you have in your FSX. So now once you have that done, you have a, F a CCP knows about the, all the runways that you have in your FSX. So next step is we're going to go and play with the airplanes. Now in the airplane section, uh, the next thing we're going to do is create a flight. To go from one airport to the other. So I'm going to start by going to uh, my airport. And now I'm going to zoom in. And one trick about the one tip about zooming in, you can't zoom in if you're right on the pin. And you zoom in with your mouse wheel uh, next to the pin, you're fine. So what I want to do first is select an aircraft. So I'm going to use the T45. The Boeing T45, I'll wait for the preview. Let me adjust the speed. I want it to be default at 200 knots and 1,000 feet. Okay, so now we're going to go place our first, star, uh, first uh, waypoint. Now, one thing to note in the waypoint, the first one that you lay down is the starting point. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, if I right click here, you'll see that it's different color, it's green. So what that means is that uh, the start, it says, okay, what it means is the speed that I want it to start at. So I want it to go up to 200 knots when it starts. And I want it to start at an altitude of zero feet because I want it to start on the runway. So I know you're going to say that uh, the there is a, you know, it might not be at zero feet, but it will know that you're trying to put it on this runway here at zero feet and what we'll do is at the end of the runway we'll put another waypoint and this one here we'll leave the default where we tell it to when you get here you should be at 200 knots and 1000 feet and now we're going to make it fly fly out and go into this airport here the Norfolk uh, K-O-R-F. So we're going to go from K-N-T-U to K-O-R-F. If I look at this airport, you can see the orientation is this way. 
So I'm just going to try to keep that to bring the plane here. So I'll add this waypoint here. And I'm going to put one waypoint at the threshold of the airport. Okay, there's a threshold here. Now the threshold, I'm going to make it slower and lower. So I'm going to make it about the 150 knots and maybe 150 feet. Now you can you can tweak it and make it come in at a nice three degree slope. Uh, my goal is just to show you how it works so that you can use it. Now one thing to be careful, uh, the next waypoint we're going to put is where it's going to try to, to, to stop. But what I want to make sure is that, uh, oh, I put the I put it in the wrong place. Sorry, it's 150 here and 150 here. Apologize for that. So this is this is going to be 150 feet, 150 uh, knots coming in. Now the next waypoint is where it's going to try to stop. Now if you put the waypoint at the end of the runway, it will overrun and and keep going. So you want to put it past somewhere in the runway. Now be careful not to put it too close to this opposite runway here because as you know we added some uh, some files to tell where the runways are and it, it might confuse it and try to think that it's trying to land this way and your plane's going to go off uh, in the field. So you want to make sure it's far enough and it just so happens that uh, I'll put it here there's already a photo real object I already have an airplane on here but I'll put it right about here and that's going to be my zero and zero so I'll put zero and zero this is where I want it to stop and this is going to be my flight. So now, like anything else that we create, I will save my flight. And I will save it as KNTU to KORF T45 flight. And I will save that. Now I can add to the monitor once I save that file. And I'm not going to do that right now. I will do that towards the end, and I will we'll take a look at uh, all our stuff. And that's essentially how you create a flight from one airport to the next. And I will demonstrate that once we get all our toys uh, lined up, and we'll go look at all of it uh, working together. The next thing we're going to create is an airplane formation. And I'm going to go back to the same airport we were at. And we're going to create ourselves a formation. So one thing that's important to note is that the formation itself will not start uh, occurring until you create the, the A waypoint, the first waypoint. Not the starting waypoint, but the first waypoint. So we'll take a look at that here. So now I'm going to set my default speed to 200 knots. And set these guys really low at... Uh, 1200 feet and I'm gonna pick uh, pick some MiG-23 coming in okay so I'm gonna create the first waypoint here and that's remember that's the starting waypoint and I want it to start at 1200 feet and at 200 knots and notice the formation is not on yet so now I'm gonna create the first waypoint here and now the formation uh, is actually enabled. So if I click on create formation, and now I select down, I can, I can select any formations. There's numerous formations out there, different ones. And I'll show you how to create your own, just like we did in the boat, the boat area. But what's interesting here is you can also create specific flight. Like in this case here, there's a tanker and two Euro fighters, and that's all in the files. So in our case here, let's create a quick flight. Uh, we're gonna do uh, fingertip, and we're gonna save that as fingertip MiG-23. Oh, I don't want to save it yet. What am I doing? <laughs> I need to put flights. I need to put some. Uh, let's let's create some more waypoints with these bad boys. Uh, put one here. 
And then I'll make it uh, go around here, 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 and kind of go in circles. Now I can save. So I'm going to put down the make 23 around KNTU. Finger formation. OK. And now I do have that. And all I have to do is add it to the monitor, which we'll do at the end. And we'll go take a look at it. But that's all I have to do. Now let's take a look at the formation itself. So you see how you have this formation here. If you go in your uh, base folder for CCP, uh, instead of the bolt pattern this time, let's open the airplane pattern. <coughs> so if I open the plane pattern, you see all your formation here. So let's take a look at the, how it works. You'll see the number is a little bit different. So as uh, before, we had uh, just two numbers to deal with, but now we have three numbers. So the way it works is the same. So the X and the Y are the first two numbers. The third number is a difference in altitude. So for example, if I have, uh, I could tell the plane to be higher or lower. I could, sorry, just I could tell the plane to be higher and uh, have some altitude difference. Now there's none here that have the altitude difference, but uh, I'm going to use it in this one here. So if you look at the fingertip here, just make sure we're on the same, uh, the same, talk about the same thing here. So if you take a look here, number one, uh, which is uh, unit zero, is a, is a zero, 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 that's the reference. And the unit number one, which is the number two. So this one is minus 20, so it's to the left, minus 20. And uh, it's 20 positive behind. So this one, uh, number three, is 20 to the right, which is positive 20, and positive 20 behind. So it's, you see how the coordinates work. But now, uh, let's create one where it's a little bit different. Let's create a box. Now a box would be, you have one, two, three, and four. Now I worked it out so I don't have to walk you through the whole thing, but let's take a look. So see the box formation here? Uh, you'll notice that uh, I have zero. Zero, zero is a reference, so that's number one. And I have uh, 30 and zero. So that means that the second plane is gonna be, it's gonna be to the right and at the same level as number one. And number three is going to be, it's going to be lined up uh, with uh, the number one, but it's going to be behind. And then uh, finally, number four is going to be uh, to the right and behind uh, number two. Now, you see how it has 20? So that means that the number two, number one and number two airplane is going to be 20 units higher than number three, than uh, number three and number four. So uh, the best way to view that, and I'm going to reload here so you can see. Let me save uh, this file here. And if I reload, uh, I'll have to get out of here. Okay. I'm going to quit here. I'm going to go into the sim, the airplane. And I just want to create some uh, to, to get my, let's create a, pick a plane, any plane. And I need to create those waypoints so that it will see the formation. Okay, there we go. Now, if you look in the formation itself, you'll have the box formation and see how you have the box formation. And now because I have the box formation here, as a uh, unit zero and unit one that's 20 on the right hand side that means these two here number one and two will be higher than three and four so that's how you basically create a formation now if you look at the formation with the fig with the uh the actual uh tanker and the Eurofighters, you can see here that you can create your own formation a very specific with specific items. Just make sure that whatever you create and share with others, that others have it, have those objects, so they will see it as well. And that's how you create formation, and that's how you use the formation, and we'll take a look at that 
as uh, toward, when we get towards the end after we've covered the tack back and the into the sim portion. Hang tight and the next part we're going to look at is uh, tack pack. In the tack pack section not much has changed. The only difference is that we can now add the actual TPS files to our monitor and start everything at once. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. I just want to show you. I'm going to import TPS and I'm going to use the TPS that we used in the previous video. And here we go. All my objects are here. And uh, now all I have to do is set a start time. And notice how it has a, oh, it's interesting. We have a, an actual calendar. So it puts the, it defaults to the current time. So you can change it to uh, whatever time you want. Just be sure it is set to uh, the GMT time that's in your simulator. So I'm going to add to monitor. Do you want to edit in case you do want to edit it? In my case, no. And if I go into monitor, and now I have my TPS file, and I can change the start time here. But it gave you the default uh, start time. And we will actually uh, load everything that we're creating in this video and uh, take a look at it individually. So that's it for the actual tag pack portion. Next thing we're going to look at, look at is uh, look into the new section, which is into sim. In order to use into sim, uh, a few things are required. Uh, first of all, you need to have your scenery open because you want to see where you can put your objects. I personally use Bob because I'd rather have Bob than have to uh, be sitting in an aircraft trying to place object. It's easier for me. And I, you put yourself on your scenery, and that's what I've done here. I put myself in my uh, in the dare range. And one thing that uh, I want to point out, uh, let's take a look at the into sim interface and see see how it goes. I want to point out to you the objects that were created for us. So. The three that we've talked about is laser pointer, the flak, and the smoke. And we'll demonstrate those and I'll put them in. The good news is every object that you put in works the same way. So you can actually put an object and uh, rotate it. Every object you put is going to work identical. You'll notice that there's, uh, there's three different color smokes. There's also three different altitude of flak, 5,000, 13,000, 25,000. There's one laser pointer, but look at the laser pointer code. So that means that in your aircraft, you'll have to have the code 1, 2, 3, 4 to destroy, uh, to pick up on that laser and be able to destroy the target it's on. Also, if you look at the miscellaneous here, anything that starts with FSX at war pack one are objects that were created, sim objects created for us to use. And those sim objects are destroyable. Now, you'll see here, if I look at the uh, fighter static, you'll see there's a whole slew of aircrafts. There's tons of them. And you'll notice they're in group of threes. Maybe they have different texture, and some of them have different uh, states. So let me uh, pick one, a simple one, just so you can see. See how there's ops, dam, and des. So there's essentially each, each sim object has a operational state, a damage state, and a destroy stage. So if you look at the viewer, you see the airplane in operational stage, what it looks like. In a damaged state, it looks darkened. And it, in the destroyed state, it looks like something that was destroyed. And there's an effect associated with that. So they've done a great job. And that's just to give you a little teaser of uh, what FSX at War is going to be like. Uh, you have a very, very large library with FSX at War. So in any case, you get to get a small preview. And like I said, every aircraft uh, it works identical uh, when putting objects on the ground. So let's try that. So, I'm gonna, uh, so the process is very simple. I can either add the object directly and manipulate it with my arrow keys and my page up and page down to rotate it. Or I can put some coordinates here and then create the object or I can put a heading as well, sorry. And they create the object, they will put it wherever I put those coordinates. And uh, for us, uh, so that's, uh, and one thing that I've done is I've actually, uh, I want to point out something. We'll create an object. So let's take a look 
let's see how that works so I'll, pay, I'll pick a, let me pick a MiG-29 a nice big plane and uh, so we can use that as our, <coughs> as our example so here we go one MiG-29 here you notice there's uh, two groups of three here you can't really see what says blue and then it says uh, Russian I believe so the the name the two different textures of the same object so anyways we're using the MiG-29 blue I'm going to create this object so whoa what happened here it's not here so here's what I want to point out when the object is created it's put at the zero degrees through so in other words if I use my shift Z and you'll see my magnetic is 11 well I've created a, a slew text to show me the true so uh, where is that at here I'm gonna go into my I'm at 222 magnetic if I shift Z I'm at 211 heading so now let's uh let's turn to towards it uh, let's find the object see where it's at so now you see you see the airplane is right here it's at about uh, 11 magnetic and if I go to my reading it's at 360 true so that's where it shows up it shows up at 360 true so you want to be mindful of that so uh, for for us in North America at least in this uh, in this area of the country on the East Coast it's 11 degrees magnetic or if you use uh, if you use something to convert your true then it would be uh, 360 or zero now as I indicated you can use the you can use the arrow keys to move it so let me get out of a out of a slew mode see the arrow keys work nice and uh, left to right right to left you know uh, rotate with the page up page down now you might think hey that's a kind of hard to put it where I want well fret not there's a there's something to help you out here you can go use the top-down view which will make it a lot easier so if I go here right click and outside view top down now you can see your aircraft you can use the space bar hold the space bar on your mouse wheels to zoom out and now that you zoomed out you can use your arrow keys and move the plane wherever you want so in our case we're gonna put it in oops that way I went out of my view hang on a sec here back to my top down view and I want to put it right in the bullseye so that's very very simple to to do now uh, one thing also you can do is uh, once you're done you want to commit that object so let's go ahead and commit that object so I'm going to go here and uh, click on validate object in position now my object is committed now let's put a laser pointer right on that object so let's go in the other section that we had I put laser pointer and I'll validate I'll create this object notice that it looks like a green arrow so I'm gonna zoom in here it's actually a green vertical line and you don't you just don't see it right now but there we go it's a green vertical line and you can position the green vertical line as long as you're not in slew mode and we'll put it right on top of the aircraft so this way once the aircraft, uh, once you use a laser pointer, you should be able to line up on this aircraft and throw a bomb using a laser guided bomb. So now, same thing we did with the other object. We're going to go and simply validate this object. Now, those two objects are validated. And in our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save these objects, and then we're going to uh, take a look at the a few more things so let me save the file I need to save the file to before I add it to monitor if I was to click add to monitor it will ask me to save the file so I'm gonna go use uh, save the file and I've already created this file here uh, here target target in bullseye laser pointer STA so I'll, I'll save and overwrite yes I want to replace it so now I'm replacing it so now it's been replaced now if you want to add files to your monitor you can add multiple files 
so now see how I have the laser pointer, the one I just created. I'm going to go back into Sim and I want to add to monitor. I could add all these sta.xml files, but just make sure you use .sta.xml, otherwise it will not work. So I'm going to use uh, other objects. Add that to, I will add that to my monitor. But before, I, before we go there, I want to point out that it's in your mission and static folder. And these files are essentially XML files. So you can open them with your favorite XML editor. So let's take a look at the one we just created here. If I open this file, you will see that uh, the file itself is nothing more than an XML with the information about our there's MBIC 29 we added, and there's the laser pointer we added. So that's all there is to that. So I'm going to add the other objects, the flak and the smoke, and we'll take a look at that. So I have created uh, other objects here that will add. And now I have it set into the monitor. Notice that there's no start time. So as soon as I connect to FSX, this will start. So I'll connect to FSX, let it start. And we're going to go take a look at it. Okay, so my objects have been created. You see that I have the smokes, I have uh, the flock, and I have my meg with the pointer. So now I've added some other objects, but uh, that's a, let us get into, <laughs> we can, uh, can see the smoke very clearly here. But uh, let us get into a different view here so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. So there's our flock. You can see it pretty cool. So I'm going to get into my uh, slew mode. So there's the target that mega uh, 29 in the center. I've added some flock and uh, the three color smokes. Added a few more planes. Now the flock itself is uh, actually operating here. You can see it as I get uh, an altitude around okay, 20, 3,500 feet. So you see I have an anti-aircraft flock here. And that's how you use the into sim. It's pretty cool. You can do a lot of stuff. And uh, and since everybody in CCP will have those uh, aircraft objects and those smokes and whatnot, they they will all see it once you create it. So it's it's a pretty cool feature. It's uh, it's one of my favorites uh, so far. In any case, uh, let's take a look at uh, the remaining features. And at the end, I'll try to combine all of them together into a mission, and we can take a look at all that stuff. Okay, so we're done looking at all the different portions in the CCP version 1329. Now, I've gone ahead and created a mission which has all of our components in it. So I'll import a mission and my 1329 mission. There we go. And now you will see that I have my TPS file loaded here. And this time it's on GMT, nothing's changed. I have a flight of a T-45 going from KNTU to KORF. I have a, a group of MiG-23 in a finger formation flying around KNTU. I have the Charles de Gaulle uh, carrier group that I've created. And I have the SIM object. I've added some, uh, some flak, the pointer, the laser pointer on the plane in the bullseye, some smokes, some more smoke effect in the bullseye, static airplanes, I want to show you what those look like, and uh, more static airplane. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our FSX, and we'll actually go and see uh, all the stuff that we've created. So, and of course, don't forget to connect to FSX for it to actually connect and show you all the objects. So one of the first things we're going to take a look at is uh, the actual aircraft that are provided to us by CCP and those are wonderful static uh, aircraft that can be put in as targets and they're, they're models so they will explode there's all kinds of different uh, aircraft. So you have some uh, some Russian planes, you have some European planes, you have some American planes. There's all kinds of wonderful objects here. So once again, it's it's great. It's great. It really enhances uh, being able to put those aircraft wherever you want with your friends. 
And since everybody has those objects, then it uh, makes it easy. You know, you, you lay it wherever you want and everybody will see it if they have CCP. Now, one thing I want to point out, uh, the next thing that's going to start is going to be our uh, our attack pack, uh, the attack pack uh, uh, TPS file that we've loaded. So I just want to show you that, that there's only a few objects in here. The attack pack has not loaded yet. And when it does load, you will see uh, numerous, uh, you'll see first of all the, the carrier and the tanker that we have in the TPS file synchronized and it appears a green bar. So that's our indication that it's kicking in. And it should be very shortly here. So I get kind of a micro pause here. It will kick in and we should see the green bar soon indicating that uh, there we go. Tanker 43 will orbit carrier 47. Or 42 I should say. So that's uh, that means my attack pack has been added. Now we're going to follow, I'm going to show you the T45 that we set up to travel to Norfolk. We're going to follow it in. Uh, it's going to take off shortly here. And before we go there, I will show you, so it's taken off now. Well, I'll show you that there's other objects here. As you can see, there's numerous objects already. So now let's go watch our T45. And we're going to watch it take off here. And it's going to take off towards uh, Norfolk. You see those uh, planes up here at the top? This formation of planes that we created. Those are the MiG-23s we created. Now T-45 is flying uh, towards its own uh, flight plan that we've done. And there we go. And it's going towards it. So let's go take a look at the, uh, the actual formation itself. So I'm going to go to MiG-23. There we go. So there's a formation flying. So it's fantastic that you can uh, create those. And right now I have them scheduled to fly around the around KNTU. So I'll keep going around KNTU and coming back and uh, taking the same pattern uh, and perpetually until until you basically stop CCP. So that's pretty cool. So now we're going to follow our T45 and uh, watch it land and then uh, after that uh, we'll go look at the uh, bolt formation so I'm gonna get the T45 in our site here uh, and then what I'll do is I'll come back when it gets close to landing so hang tight okay so our plane is uh, heading towards the airport now you will notice it's flying pretty low and if you remember I said the threshold at 150 feet when it hits the threshold for the airport. So what that means is that the last waypoint that I was, I was at uh, 1000 feet. I told, it, I told the airplane the next waypoint I want you to be 150 feet or 150 knots. So what it does after it passes the last waypoint before that, it will try to go to 150 feet and 150 knots. And then it will stay there until the waypoint where it reaches uh, the uh, that altitude and that uh, that speed. So in our case, it's gonna cross the it's gonna cross the threshold at 150 feet, 150 knots. Now I did create this flight pretty quickly. You can spend a lot of time and make sure that it comes in and uh, goes down on a three degree slope, and it's just a matter of uh, tweaking it and making it work the way you want to. So be aware that. Uh, when you set a waypoint, the next waypoint you set, the aircraft starts right away trying to get to whatever uh, attitude you gave it. So now we're getting close to the runway and it will attempt to land on this runway here. It will cross the threshold, correct itself, and then we should see it uh, try to land. And it should come to a complete stop. So let me uh, position us a little bit lower here. Okay, the gear is coming out. There we go. And we have touched down. Now I will try to put the speed brakes on and slow down to nothing.
that's pretty cool that we can do that. Uh, so you can set up all kinds of flights and uh, plan missions and add a lot of realism. So now that we've landed the T-45, we're going to go and take a look at the uh, both formation we created as well as the objects that we added. Okay, there's the cruisers and the carrier and I see the small helicopter, although it's hard to see. Check landing gear. Check landing gear. Yeah, bet you Betty wants to make sure that uh, I'm not gonna end up in a the drink. There's a the helicopter next to the carrier. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is going to uh, uh, attack our targets. So I will set up the position, I'll come back and uh, and we'll go through the setup. Okay, so I am turning towards the target. And although it is hard to see here, on the in the FLIR, you will see that uh, my code is 2101. So I'll press the USC button, I want to change it to 1, 2, 3, Four, which is a laser code. I press enter and the laser code will actually change here. There we go. We now have a laser code of one, two, three, four. So when I fly towards the target, one thing you want to make sure, you want to make sure that this panel here, the LST switch is actually on, otherwise it will not work. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have all of your uh, bombs selected, air to ground mode and harm is set to on and finally the last thing you want to do is just uh, basically turn on the LST mode in your FLIR so it starts picking up tr uh, tracking for the target so you see it's searching, wow it picked it up already so now it's tracking a target from the laser pointer so what I will do is I will make sure that this uh, this is priority, this uh, FLIR display is priority and then I will designate wherever the laser pointer is I now have a target locked so my job now is to fly to the target and then uh, drop the bombs once we get there we're seven miles and you'll notice I have uh, set it up I have set up to drop four bombs at a time Now we're coming near the uh, the range, and I've set up a whole bunch of uh, different things in the range. So our target is obviously the the plane that we set up, and it's starting to come into view now. And you see the smoke starting. We're getting close and you can observe that there, there is some uh, flak in the air. We're being uh, targeted by uh, anti-aircraft flak. And now I'm going to go towards my target. You see the red smoke. There's also green smoke starting. And I don't know if we'll have a chance to see the yellow, but I did put some yellow smoke on there as well. So I got my indication that uh, to drop the bomb. I got my pickle on. There we go. There's the yellow smoke. Okay, so we just had explosions. So now let's go ahead and uh, turn around and see if we hit our target and to see if we get some collateral damage. Okay, let's write ourselves up and take a look. Yep, we hit our target and some collateral damage. 
so that this is it for uh, CCP 1329 update hopefully this uh, video is helpful to you if you like the video please subscribe uh, I will be doing videos for the FSX at war that will be coming out this year so stay tuned thank you very much for watching blue over and out